Larry Sharp is a libertarian con- uh, candidate for governor of New York State. Spent some time here and has an opinion on the Hospital Downtown Project. Larry Sharp, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. Okay, why should people say, hey, I'm going to go with a libertarian candidate. I'm voting Larry Sharp here in New York. Oh, my God, there are so many reasons. The first one is because I'm so handsome. Yes, but. I figured that was it. I, was, <laughs> yes. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but, yep. you know, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Yeah, well, just, but there's, there's many. The, the funny thing is people ask me all the time, why am I running? And I'm running because there are 100,000 New Yorkers every year leaving this state, and I don't want to become one of them. If I don't actually fix this state, then I'm going to have to leave, too, like so many of us. Sure. And, the and, state is wonderful. It's a diverse state where you can literally drive, you know, three hours and get to an area that's equivalent of Colorado, to an area that's equivalent of Ohio, to an area that's the largest city in the entire nation. Yeah. And if I want to enjoy that diversity, I have to respect the diversity and, and let the counties be the counties. And that's what we've lost. Uh, as a libertarian, you'd be a traditional uh, libertarian, right? You uh, believe less in less government, and uh, and certainly, wow, uh, is there room for a libertarian in New York? We are the government state. That is it. Actually, Cato ranked us 50th um, when it came to freedom. See, we beat California, number one. Uh, we were actually the bottom of the barrel when it came to freedom, ranked by Cato, and I want to change that. The advantage here is I think New York is at a point to where we actually are prepared for this because about 70% of New Yorkers don't vote. We are very high when it comes to people who don't vote because people have given up. This is called learned helplessness, and they want something different. They want something yeah. new. So I think absolutely. Everywhere I go when I travel the state, I always ask two questions. The first one I ask is, you know, um, are you considering leaving? And at least a third of the room's hands go up. Yeah. And then yeah. when I ask <clears> the other <throat> question is, um, have you, how, how many people here have not voted in at least the last two election cycles? And again, a big chunk of the room, the hands will go up. People who have not voted are coming to my events. They are listening to me. They're hearing what I have to say. And I'm talking about changing things. I don't want the idea that government, particularly state government, sure. is simply a way of enforcing the will of the majority, right? I don't want that. I want, I want the state government's job to be to defend the rights of the individual, particularly against the local bullies, which always pop up. Yeah. Right now, the local bullies are part of the system. Do you uh, anybody ever mess up with and and, uh, and confuse you with the uh, with a professional wrestler? Because I'm I'm pretty sure there's a pro wrestler. Absolutely, but he just passed away this year. This oh, year, oh well, yes, that's Larry sad. Sharp, pretty boy, Larry Sharp. Yeah, yep. <laughs> absolutely. He yeah. had his own uh, monster factory where he used to actually uh, train wrestlers. And, and now, I watched him when I was a kid. Uh, and now you get to be pretty boy. I do. Yeah, I get to be the pretty boy, Larry Sharp. Absolutely, I do. But um, I'm sad that he passed. <laughs> But um, it, it does is make my is, Google yeah. search is better. Uh, it certainly does. Yeah, yes. you're absolutely right. It's gonna you're 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 skyrocketing here. I want to ask you about um, uh, about the do- hospital downtown. Obviously, as a libertarian, eminent domain is something you would uh, certainly not support. And it looks like they'll be using eminent domain. Uh, they certainly are at this point. Uh, we could avoid it, but they're moving in that direction. You'd yeah. be you'd be against that. Thus, you'd be against the hospital going downtown. Look, I'm not against the hospital itself going downtown. People often say, well, Larry, you haven't spent enough time looking at you know, the issues and, and what makes sense or not. I never want government to say, oh, this makes sense, so let's go bulldoze your house. Yeah. I don't care if it makes sense or not. What I care about is if this is a great investment, like I've been told four to five to six times right, Larry, you understand it's a great investment. If it's a great investment, then why do we need $300 million from Albany? This is a money grab. It is the same idea I talked about. We have a situation to where our economic development corporations are almost the only way that we get money in our counties. So when they decide to use the Hunger Games to give us some of our money back, we we cry and do whatever it takes to get our money back to include take our neighbor's property. No, if if it's a good idea, then there should be tons of bankers sitting there with their checkbooks out. Ready to write checks. Here is the uh, uh, to be fair, Larry. um, We are uh, in upstate New York, and certainly a a city like Utica that has had fifty years of uh, of decline, Uh, and even before that, uh, the property values are low. That makes it very difficult to raise the money needed to be able to move forward. And I understand private investment would be would be big, but without government investment. Um, cities like Utica just would not uh, would not move forward. I, I, oh my God! I, I are you kidding that. me? It's <clears throat> government investment, which which has taken all these cities down. Well, what, what, come on, please. But, Let, let's not think that. Look, I'm I I was born and raised in New York City, yeah. <clears throat> and I have seen 
neighborhood after neighborhood recover and recover and recover without government investment. Again, I've seen neighborhoods where you wouldn't want to walk in the daytime. Yeah. Now, if you want to see, look at Utica now, look outside of the footprint of the hospital. And what do you see? Recovery. Well, what and, the and, hospital did yeah. was stop recovery. That's what it did. Yeah, I disagree with that. And, I, and I'll also tell you, our schools couldn't exist without government money, without the downstate influx of property taxes. I mean, uh, Larry, I'm just telling you, you're in, you're in la-la land if you think that we can survive up here without government investment. It just you're in wouldn't la-la happen. land if you honestly believe that your no, city can ever recover la-la with land. government. There's no <laughs> way. Please show me one example of that ever happening. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show Doesn't you right. Exist. I'm going to show you right now. Does the, it exist? I, it does. How could you say? I haven't even said it yet. Go ahead. The uh, the Adirondack Bank Center, the the uh, Utica Memorial Auditorium, the progress that has happened there in the last five years is mind-blowing, and there's so much government money in that thing, even Hold your on. face I, is I'm, turning I'm sorry. red. Hold on. The Adirondack Bank Center is sponsored by what? A bank. But it wasn't, yes, it wasn't, built, by, it wasn't built by the bank, Larry. It doesn't matter. Private investment okay. has to come in and make this stuff work but the money, always. But, but the money that the they Buffalo got... Buffalo billions but, work? But Buffalo's the, lost half its population. But the, money, but the money they got from the Adirondack Bank is, is chump change it compared is. to so what... What, what, what you're was, telling me is Utica is not growing as fast as it could grow, yet it's had a bunch of uh, government money thrown into it. And you're telling me that that's going to make Utica the great city that it has been? No. Larry, no, can, I, can, I, I can I tell completely. you, Larry, I, I'm sure you've spoken with, with Jim Brock. Jim Brock, the man who is the face of no downtown hospital and, mm-hmm. and no eminent domain. Do you know, and, and somebody fact check me on this, because sometimes, Larry, I just go out with crap that isn't even true. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead. Okay. Don't say that, Bill. Somebody fact check me on this. When, when, the, when the, the board at the auditorium, which is called the, the, the authority, the, the authority when, when they move forward on this upcoming Nexus project, which is over there at the Adirondack Bank Center, and they took the Tartan building, Jim Brock voted for eminent domain to take that building. Now, so he's, he's for it there. Now he's out saying for the hospital he's against it. You've got somebody talking out of both sides of their mouth here, i got, I got somebody who's on my side on this issue. I don't care where he talked before. Right now, he's on my side yeah. with this issue, and that's what I care about. And if he had been, I don't know the details of that. Three years had, ago, two years ago. If he had been for, if that's true, if he'd been for, I would have been against him then. But I'm for him now All right, because eminent <clears throat> domain is wrong. Just because it's the right idea doesn't mean it's okay to say your stuff. Because I decide, <clears throat> you know what, I'm going to give you $25. Yeah. Can I then take the shirt off your back? No, it is wrong. Not if it's it was a good investment... 30. Then get people to show up Hold and on. invest. Memanaski has just uh, has just fact checked. I I think that's correct. I'm not hundred percent sure. Thank I you. do believe that's correct. So I didn't though. just make that up. No. And right. I don't care if it's true or not. He's okay. right now, Larry. That's uh, my point. I'll Larry. tell you right now. You can have this shirt for twenty five bucks, <laughs> Larry. Well, that. oh, that's not bad. See, but then you said that's okay because then you gave it to me, I, and that's okay. fine. Okay, I, I get your point. I truly believe that's absolutely Larry, fine. If Larry Sharp wins the governorship. Unlike when? unlike the current governor, who we can never get on the radio to discuss issues, I believe Larry Sharp would be here when we ask for him, when he's available, and we'd be able to talk to you. you Communication. It is it is it is so important, and we don't have any of that in Albany right now. Let me ask you, uh, Stephanie Miner. You've yep. got Cynthia Nixon. This yep. vote is being split for Cuomo. If Miner gets in, this is not good news for Andrew Cuomo. Look, the reality of it is, there's only two people who who can be possibly governor in next January. It's Cuomo or me. The Republican hasn't won a statewide election in this state in over 10 years. Whether you count Senate, Governor, AG, doesn't matter. Hasn't won in over 12 years. Never going to win. The Republican sacrificial lamb is never going to win. The minor <laughs> Democrats are never going to win. They're just going to split the vote. Yeah. Either people will get that I am an actual person who will make real change, who will stand up for principle, who will allow individual counties to do what they want to do, who will change how New York is run, or they're going to stay with the old ways, and, the, and this, this state is going to stay on a small, slow slope into oblivion and keep decaying. And a lot more of us are going to leave. Let's uh, do this again, Larry. Could we? Uh, I, I would appreciate it. And I 100%. Wish, wish you Absolutely. the best. Very interesting. I, I'm Obviously, traveling all over the place. You'll see me anyway. And your attention to Utica is, does not go unnoticed. I think it's very important. I, I, well, look, I happen to realize that New York State is more than just New York City. Yeah. 
You do. Not everybody knows that. So. That's correct. All right, Larry Sharp, Libertarian candidate for governor of New York State. We'll do it again. Thanks so much. Have a great morning. All right, you too. 7.54. One of the great points that he did make was <clears throat> that uh, all the progress was happening outside the hospital footprint, but that was the case even before <clears throat> the hospital was proposed. Yeah, but, and, a, and a lot of the, some of what is happening now is because the hospital is going downtown. Right. I know they will tell you that's not true, but come talk to the business owners that I've talked to, and they'll tell you that it absolutely is true. So um, it is what it is. But how about that fact? Jim Brock, all against eminent domain. But just a a couple years ago, voted for eminent domain when it came to taking that turn. You know the the project we're talking about. It's been leveled right next door. It's gone. Why was Jim Brock okay with it then, but he's not okay with it now? Hmm. Interesting.